this month's uh, Firebyte session, Dimension 101, start leveraging log data in 10 minutes or less. When we actually uh, started out trying to come up with a title of this, I said to uh, Wendy, I can actually do it. I've uh, tested it in under five minutes that we can start logging that data for you. But I felt in a live environment and with everyone watching me, I felt a little bit safer going to 10 minutes. So as we look at the agenda for today, we're actually going to cover a few items. Uh, again, as hopefully this isn't the, your first uh, Firebyte session, but if it is, welcome. Uh, just a little bit about myself as a presenter. I'd like to kind of uh, stick to the agenda by slide and then mix and match with a live environment. So today we're going to talk about uh, how much it does watch card dimension cost you. And actually, I'll just go ahead and answer that question right now because it's absolutely free. Uh, you can actually use it with some of the E-series, some of the legacy devices, as long as it's 11.0 11, um, 11 or later. Um, you can go ahead and leverage that data through Watch Card Dimension. We're going to cover where do I in download uh, Dimension, what environment will Dimension work in, and then we're going to walk through the Dimension wizard and ultimately set up email notifications and start scheduling those reports so that you can get that uh, vital information out of your uh, network within a matter of minutes and you can have those reports in your inbox every day. So as we look at how to get started with WatchGuard Dimension, uh, again, you can download Dimension from software.watchguard.com. We'll go ahead and demonstrate that in a, a little bit here. The release notes are going to have all of the installation and upgrade information. Now, as I mentioned, installation and upgrade, obviously there's two different paths. If you already have an existing uh, Dimension database, you don't want to reinstall it, otherwise you'll lose your data. So that's where the upgrade information would uh, come in handy. As you look at uh, Dimension, it is an appliance. It's deployed as an appliance within a Hyper-V or VMware environment. Uh, today I'll be demonstrating an ESX environment. And as you can see uh, with the screenshot below, this is actually the Dimension interface. Hopefully this isn't news, new news to you as a WatchGuard customer and user. As we look at this, for instance, we're seeing a top zero-day malware APT blocker is kicking into high gear here with uh, celebrity picks, free games. I would imagine with uh, tax day right around the corner, we're probably also going to see quite a bit of influx of your refund is available. All these types of phishing attacks, so just be aware of those as we head into uh, tax season. So as we look at uh, the directions or how to install the Dimension Virtual Machine, these are the steps that we're going to be going through. So we're going to deploy the uh, WatchGuard Dimension Virtual Machine. We're going to connect to our ESX host. I've also used uh, Dimension within uh, VM Workstation. And we're going to go File Deploy OVF Template. We're going to browse to the OVA file. We're going to um, accept the EULA, the end user license agreement, and we're going to provision the disk. And then the important part is to how to get your IP address so you know how to uh, configure the Dimension Wizard. And it differs a little bit if you're in Hyper-V and I'll cover how to uh, get that in both environments for you. So with that, let's go ahead and switch into a live environment. As I mentioned, uh, you can actually get your software by going, and uh, my apologies, um, my wife always says I move too fast, so I need to uh, kind of slow down a little bit on this. But as we look at software.watchguard.com, that's the address that we want to go to to download uh, the software. From here we have, and if you haven't checked this out, we have completely redone the software download section. If you recall, you used to have to log into the website, uh, navigate through the website. Now we've completely taken that outside of that uh, logging, logged in environment, and now it's uh, freely available for you to download. The nice thing is we have the quick links here, so you can click on, for instance, Dimension 1.3 Update 1. We also have the Watchbird System Manager here, but today we're going to be covering Dimension 1.3 Update 1. So we can just click on that link, 
that takes us right into the details page um, for dimension. As I mentioned, we have the release notes. Now, the release notes also cover, um, for instance, before you begin, it covers your environment. And an important part here is that uh, it states to see any related data uh, pertaining to subscription services, so web blocker, spam blocker, gateway antivirus, intrusion prevention, signatures or IPS, RED, application control, DLP, and APT blocker, you must have a valid subscription in there. So your mileage may vary if you um, maybe don't have APT blocker today, although you can go in and simply re request a um, trial subscription of that. And again, it will accept any log messages uh, for Fireware, XDM 11 or higher. So as we look at this, it also has the system requirements. We have uh, Dimension on VMware, Hyper-V, and it is running on a Postgre database. So there's a SQL database running in the background. The browser compatibility um, lists are there. And then we have, for instance, the um, installation, or actually the upgrade, and then the installation instruction, which we're going to cover in this um, session. So again, looking at this, since we are going to focus today on a VMware uh, appliance, we're going to go ahead and start downloading this um, OVF template for new installations. It's going to go ahead and start downloading, but I, um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. I actually have it downloaded already. So as we look at, um, again, this is my ESX environment. I'm going through, connecting through my vSphere. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with this environment, um, I'm actually running XDM D firewalls and they're in a full clustered environment. Very cool things that uh, maybe we'll cover in a future session if you're, uh, if you'd like to see that. So we go into File, Deploy, OVF Template. Now we can simply choose the um, file that we have. Even though it's an OVA file, we still use the OVF template. They're uh, synonymous. Um, so we're going to choose that OVA file here, and we're going to go ahead and click Next. Now once that actually uh, loads up in our system, it's going to simply give us a, a Details, the vendor, of course, watch card technologies, as well as the size on the disk for them. Here's the EULA. We go ahead and accept that. Click Next. You know, by the way, the five minutes did not include uh, reading every word of the EULA. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and name it as a dimension server. Now with the watch card, um, the appliances, whether it's XDMD or the uh, dimension appliances, we do want to configure these as a thick uh, provision, lazy zeroed, as indicated here. And it's going to allow it to be um, more flexible. We also have the, if you have virtual switches in your environment, we can select which switch that uh, we want that to be on. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and power on after deployment. Click on finish, and now it's creating that uh, VMware, uh, deploying that appliance within a matter of minutes, we're going to be ready to go. So the next step from here is going to be to get the IP address of uh, Dimension. Now with VMware, it's actually quite a bit easier because we can see that right on the appliance screen that I'll show you in a, um, in a few seconds here. So as we look at this appliance that we just deployed, we're going to see the IP address come in right there we go. That's the IP address that we're going to want to connect to from a browser to start the uh, to start the setup wizard. Now, if it is running on Hyper-V, this is where it differs um, slightly. We're not going to be able to see the IP address there. Instead, we're going to have to go into the console. So let's go ahead and click on Open Console. Uh, it would be fairly similar in a Hyper-V environment. And we're going to log in as WG support. Again, all of this is in the uh, WatchGuard documentation, the README file. And the first one is um, going to be read-write. That's going to be the default password. 
and then it's going to ask us to change the password on that first login. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the default read write password, and then I'm going to choose a new password. Again, this is only necessary if you're running in a Hyper-V environment to find out the IP address. I'm going to simply use the command ifconfig, and it's going to show me the IP address that we have here. So not surprising, we see 1.52, just like we saw on the summary screen of that uh, virtual appliance right here. So let me go ahead and move these out of the way. We're officially done with uh, deploying that. It was that easy. So now the next step is really to get in to the website and start um, configuring uh, the dimension wizard. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the IP address. Of course, my certificate isn't trusted yet. We can go ahead and uh, trust that certificate if need be. I'm going to go ahead and log in with the default of admin and read write as a password. So again, as we look at the dimension setup wizard, part, a few of the steps are going to include setting a host name for dimension, talking about uh, setting the IP address for that interface, and then the uh, administrator passphrase and the log encryption key. Now, the important thing to mention as well is if you wanted to tie into Active Directory uh, user authentication, you can absolutely do that. The log encryption key We'll go through that process, but essentially, if you have a remote, let's say you have uh, Dimension sitting in the cloud, your log files are all being encrypted, so you don't need to worry about um, plain text log files going across the wire. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, be real original and call the host name Dimension. I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, a static IP address on this. And just for the um, today's scenario, I'm going to choose the existing uh, DHCP address, obviously, that I would change um, for your organization. I'm going to choose the default gateway on this. So that's going to be my, um, again, in this case, I'm running on a behind a uh, WatchGuard T10. So I'm going to put in the IP address of that. I'm going to put in uh, DNS servers. Today I'm going to use Google. I wouldn't uh, necessarily advise that in uh, every environment. You would probably host or have some sort of internal DNS server that you would use. I'm going to choose a domain name on that. Click Next. Change my administrator passphrases. And then I'm going to set the encryption key. And again, here we see that it's to establish a secure connection between your log server and the XDM.